The AMD Ryzen 7800X3D is widely renowned as the current king of gaming CPUs, but is it really that much better than an Intel 14700K? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the UPC FC series, we've been helping you make the right choice by pitting two components against each other in the PC Octagon to see who wins. In this video, our focus will be on two top gaming CPUs, with the AMD Ryzen 7 7800 X3D in the red corner, taking on the Intel Core i7 14700K in the blue corner. I always like to over deliver in my videos, so in addition to showing you benchmarks across 16 games at three different resolutions, I'm also going to show you how to overclock your CPU and Windows. And if you stay to the end, I will share with you some bonus expert tips on how to keep your Windows install fresh, a must do for every PC gamer and enthusiast. It's really not rocket science, so before the main event gets started, let's jump straight into CPU overclocking. There are many different ways to overclock your CPU. By far the easiest way is to do it directly in Windows using free overclocking software offered by AMD and Intel. The performance boost you achieve will not be as large as if you were to manually tune your CPU in BIOS, but it will be much, much quicker. The two pieces of software I plan to use for this are AMD Ryzen Master and Intel Extreme Tuning Utility or XTU. Both are available directly from AMD and Intel, so make sure you download them from their websites to avoid accidentally installing malware. AMD Ryzen Master is a useful and easy to use free tool provided by AMD. The Auto OC feature works, but in my experience it doesn't typically provide much of a performance boost, especially for X3D chips. For AMD CPUs with 3D vCache, you will likely get better results by undervolting with third-party software like Project Hydra. That said, here is the easy way to overclock your AMD CPU using Ryzen Master. Step 1. Make sure Precision Boost Overdrive or PBO is set to Auto in BIOS before you start. Step 2. Bench Benchmark your baseline configuration. Anytime you overclock a component, it is always important to establish a baseline by benchmarking your current system. I plan to use 3 d Mark and the CPU Profile Benchmark for this video, but you can use a free tool like Cinebench. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as it's a CPU benchmark. Make sure you don't use a GPU benchmark. Run the benchmark and record your baseline score. Step 3. Open AMD Ryzen Master, click on the Auto OC option under Control Mode, and then click on Apply and Test. Your system will need to reboot so that the software can switch on PBO in BIOS. When your system boots back into Windows, Ryzen Master will automatically load and will run a stress test. Once the stress test completes, you can close Ryzen Master. Congratulations, your CPU is now overclocked. And don't worry, your OC settings will remain even after you reboot, since the software made the changes in BIOS for you. Step 4. Check the performance boost gained by your overclock by rerunning your benchmark software. Record your OC score and compare it with your baseline score. As you can see, the performance gain for the 7800X3D CPU that I tested was somewhat small, with a 2.4% increase in CPU profile score. This will likely not translate into a meaningful increase in gaming performance, so as I mentioned earlier, for X3D chips it would be much better to undervolt your CPU using third-party overclocking software like Project Hydra. One last important point to mention. I have multiple 7950X systems and on both systems running the Auto OC feature in Ryzen Master results in the system not posting. So I highly recommend saving your current BIOS settings before you start just in case you are forced to clear your CMOS. Intel XTU is a great free tool that allows you to extensively tweak your CPU in Windows. The speed optimizer feature works well and usually provides a decent performance boost. If you have the patience and are willing to tweak each setting then you will be able to use this software to push your CPU to the limit. For most people, the trade-off of time versus result will not be enough to warrant doing that. So here is the easy way to overclock your Intel CPU using XDU. Step 1. As with the AMD overclock process, you need to benchmark your baseline configuration. I will again use 3D Mark and the CPU Profile Benchmark for my Intel overclock. But as mentioned previously, you can use any free tool like Cinebench as long as it's a CPU benchmark. Run the benchmark and record your baseline score. Step 2. Open Intel XDU, click on the Speed Optimizer option and then then click on Optimize Now. When it completes, you will see before and after columns that show the specific tweaks performed by the software. Congratulations, your CPU is now overclocked. When you close XDU, your new settings will automatically be saved, so don't worry. If, however, you want your system to auto-load these settings when you reboot, go to Settings, 
advanced options and tick the option next to restore tuning after reboot. Step three, check the performance boost gained by your overclock by rerunning your benchmark software. Record your OC score and compare with your baseline score. As you can see, the performance gain for the 14700K CPU that I tested was pretty good with a 4.1% increase in CPU profile score. This is nearly double the performance gain for the 7800X3D and shows just how good the auto OC feature is with the Intel XDU software. Keep in mind that your specific results will be heavily impacted by silicon quality and CPU cooling. And that's it. As you can see, it's really not rocket science. The performance boost gain with these simple auto overclock features isn't huge, but that's to be expected with modern CPUs that automatically boost their clock frequencies based on thermal headroom. This is why undervolting has become popular. If you happen to get lucky in the silicon lottery, you may be able to reduce your CPU voltage and temperature while maintaining the same core frequencies. This would then allow your CPU to boost higher for longer, which in turn may have a meaningful impact on your gaming performance. Let me know in the comments below if you would like me to put together a more extensive CPU optimization guide in the future. As mentioned earlier, the battle today is between the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D in the red corner, taking on the Intel Core i7 14700K in the blue corner. The test systems being used to run the benchmarks are my AMD and Intel open bench tables with the following components. For the AMD test platform, for the motherboard, we have a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. For the RAM, we have G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB 32GB DDR5 6000 at CL30. For the GPU, we have a Zotac GeForce RTX 4090 Amp Extreme Aero. For the CPU cooler, we have an EVGA CLCX 360mm AIO. For the storage, we have 2TB SK Hynix Platinum P41 NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have a Gigabyte GP AP 1200PM 1200W Platinum Power Supply. For the Intel test platform, for the motherboard, we have an ASUS ROG Maximus Z690 Extreme. For the RAM, we have have Team T-Force Delta RGB 48GB DDR5 7000 at CL34. For the GPU, we have a Zotac GeForce RTX 4090 Amp Extreme Aero. For the CPU cooler, we have an ASUS ROG Ryzen 2 360mm AIO. For storage, we have 2TB Samsung 980 Pro NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have an EVGA Supernova 1200P2 1200W Platinum Power Supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All testing was performed with the RTX 4090 at default clocks. The memory for the 7800X3D was set to Expo, while the memory for the 14700K was set to XMP. All other motherboard BIOS settings were left at default values. To remove BIOS from the benchmarks, it's important to test both systems at their optimum memory conditions. For AMD AM5 systems, this means testing at 6000 mega transfers per second. Based on my prior testing, I found that performance for the 7800X3D does not scale well with increased memory speeds, due primarily to limitations with the Infinity fabric. For Intel LGA 1700 systems, performance does scale with memory speed. However, memory stability becomes an issue at higher speeds, especially with four DIMM motherboards, and is highly dependent on the quality of the CPU Integrated Memory Controller, or IMC. So to avoid producing results that only a handful of lucky users will be able to achieve, I selected a memory speed of 7200 mega transfers per second. Unfortunately for my 14700K, I got unlucky with the IMC, so I could only get the memory fully stable by reducing the speed to 7000. I could get it stable at 7200 by switching off the E cores and increasing the voltage. However, I didn't think this was representative of what most users would do. In order to thoroughly test the two CPUs, I ran the benchmarks at multiple resolutions, but unlike previous videos, I did so at different game settings. To place maximum load on each CPU, I tested at 1080p with low settings, which should allow me to extract max performance from each chip. To create a more balanced CPU GPU load, I tested at 1440p with medium settings. And to see if the CPUs could extract maximum performance from the RTX 4090, I tested at 4K with ultra settings. Each of these resolution setting combinations aligns well with typical gamer selections, with 1440p medium settings reflecting what most online first person shooter gamers would likely use to achieve maximum frame rates. Whereas 4K ultra settings reflect what most single player gamers would do with a high end CPU GPU combination to extract maximum quality. With the test systems ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. But before we do, I think it's only appropriate to introduce this the right way. Over to you, Bruce. And now, it's time! Introducing the components fighting for Blackbird PC Tech Benchmark Supremacy. In the blue corner, we have the 
champion. In the red corner, we have the challenger who will win this battle royale. Stay tuned to find out. As mentioned earlier, there are a few things that every PC gamer and enthusiast should be doing to keep Windows running efficiently. I test a lot of different components and I don't have time to reinstall a fresh version of Windows every time I test. So this is what I do to keep my Windows installation fresh. Tip one, download and install CCleaner. During installation, it will ask you if you would like to install third-party software in a very subtle way. Make sure you uncheck or decline these options. It's a bit annoying, but the software is free and super useful. Next, go to custom clean and then click Run Cleaner. Once that completes, go to Registry and click on Scan for Issues. Click on Review Selected Issues and click No, click Fix Issues and then click Close. Tip 2. Go to the search bar and type in CMD. Move your cursor up to the command prompt, right click on it and select Run as Administrator. In the command prompt window that pops up, type SFC slash scan now and hit enter. Let it run to 100% completion. If you run this command frequently, then you will likely not find any corrupt files as shown. However, if you haven't run this command for a while or you've never run it, then I can almost guarantee that it will find corrupt files. The good news is it will almost always be able to fix the corrupt files it finds. And that's it. Two simple but powerful expert tips that I highly recommend every PC gamer enthusiast run routinely. I do this at least once a week or after any major change in hardware or software. Hopefully this helps you keep your Windows installation running efficiently for many years to come. In this video, we pitted two of the top gaming CPUs against each other in the PC Octagon to see who will emerge victorious. With the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D in the red corner, taking on the Intel Core i7 14700K in the blue corner. As you may have expected, the round by round results show a clear victory for the 7800X3D with 9 victories, 5 losses and 2 draws across 16 hard fought rounds. The extra cores of the 14700K do help it in applications such as Blender, but when you look at the average gaming performance across 16 games, especially the 1% lows, it's clear that the 7800X3D is a better choice for gamers, with performance advantages of over 10%. This is further supported by looking at power efficiency, with the 7800X3D achieving its 
performance at roughly half the power draw of the 14700K and at much lower temperatures. It's truly impressive just how far AMD has progressed with their CPU designs relative to Intel since the introduction of Ryzen. Given that the 7800X3D has a significant advantage in gaming performance, what happens when we look at cost? The 14700K is actually $30 more expensive than the 7800X3D at the time of filming this video, which is somewhat surprising. If you convert that into gaming efficiency or FPS per dollar at 1080p, then the 7800X3D provides a knockout blow by offering significantly more value than the 14700K. It's fantastic to see this level of price to performance and it really should be a wake up call to Intel. They no longer have the best chips and really should adjust their pricing accordingly. Look, the 14700K is an excellent CPU and is a good option if you were doing a mix of applications and gaming, but its price really lets it down. That said, if you're a gamer and want the best, then look no further than the 7800X3D. It offers amazing performance and an equally amazing price. Regardless of whether you're an Intel or AMD fan, we should all appreciate that strong competition in CPUs has resulted in excellent pricing for consumers. Hopefully the same can happen with GPUs in the very near future. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship Battle Series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes as other components battle it out in the PC Octagon. Please also comment and offer suggestions on any future components that you would like to see go head to head. Bye for now.